Armored Core Law, Air. Air's history is a complex one, as to understand what she is, we first have to take a look into Coral itself, as this will help with the understanding of who or what she is. For a start, Coral is, as Professor Nagai will write in his report, Coral is an organic substance capable of self-propagation. The speed at which it proliferates is determined by the density of the colony. However, one must not overlook the signs of mutations within the coral brought about by this density effect. It is mutations such as these that will bring about a collapse that humanity has no hope of controlling. These mutations will become known as sea pulse waves, and air, as we know, was not the first sea pulse wave to make contact with a human. Father Don Mayan is the first recorded person to hear the sea pulse waves, with his naming itself Syria. While some may suggest these waves could be humans lost to coral, in truth coral itself, as found out by the Rubicon Institute, is organisms that can transfer digital data effectively, allowing it to create personalities for themselves as they feed off this data. In truth, what people were doing is feeding all the information through living organisms, that could then use it to create their own voices and names. Syria, in this case, seemed to be a free coral, not tied to a collection of coral, and was able to, as Air would later call it, contact with a coral-ridden then Dolmayan. So what does this mean for Air? She was actually first discovered by Allmind. The observation data can be found on the databanks of an IA-27 ghost, a craft made by the Institute but now used by Allmind. It reads, Observation data extracted from an AC of unknown affiliation appears to have once been heavily encoded, then cracked by a third party. A wave mutation has been detected. It's happening. The aging mercenary is the ideal candidate to serve as the trigger. We must now bring the third factor into play. Now, this data may not have been obtained by the ghosts first. In fact, there is an AC found in this area, but it's under the structure of the watch point, which within its databanks has the independent mercenary comms within it. So, it would not be hard to suggest Allmine hired an independent mercenary to scout out this place, and then sent out a ghost patrol squad to take them out. After all, they had served their purpose. Only it seems a squad or single ghost unit was cut down by the PCA defences, leading to its resting place on the roof. Why did they not check the roof? Perhaps its cloaking system was still functional, but this is all very unproven, as all we have is a few downed machines and a few comms to go off. However, what this does tell us is that Allmine was the first one to detect the mutant coral, Air, and this is perhaps why Sulla was there with or without his ghost helpers. Yet, as we know, 621 would kill Sulla and be caught up in a coral surge after destroying the watchpoint sensor valve. This sudden surge would allow the fourth generation coral augmented 621 to make contact with Air, as now free, she would inhabit the coral augmentations of 621 within them. More specifically, the brain augmentations of the mercenary, as she even says, are synchronized with your brain waves and maintain contact to support you. I think it's worth mentioning here, brain waves are produced by synchronized electronic pulses from masses of neurons communicating with each other. So the lady in my head people like to use when talking about air is not far from the truth. But it should be said, air is not controlling the brain state of 621 as even though our thoughts, emotions and behaviours are all to do with the communication between neurons within our brains, the mercenary state of mind is very much their own. She is not controlling them, more to be blunt, she's acting as another processor. She can intake information through the electric pulses of 621's brain, as well as all other information from touch, sight, smell, and using this, feed back to 621 again using electronic pulses, which thanks to their augmentation, allows them to hear these as her voice. Technically, while you could classify Air as a parasite due to her being an organism that invades another's brain, this may be a little unfair. As we have just discussed, it seems Air does not connect with the actual brain of 621, but instead the augmentation within it. Still, back onto Air's history, it's here the pair would fight the PCA Balteus, and walking away alive, Air would ask to stay with 621 until they reach the Coral Convergence. It's here I want to address something I notice as I look through Air's time with 621. It is suggested that Air seems to be manipulative of 621. She seems to push the mercenary into things, but the truth is Air herself has something built into her. 
even as a mutation of coral, it's in her nature to want to be with other coral. It's a natural state all coral wants to be close to each other, so while air seems very pushy, this is because the nature of her being. She wants to be with her brothers and sisters, she calls them, and you can see this become more and more clear as 621 and her get closer and closer to the convergent. It's during this journey, however, there is a connection built between 621 and Air, one that could ultimately have affected the mercenary's decision. The most famous of these being during the mission Survey the Uninhabited Floating City, where Air says this. You know, it's been a long time since we've been on a mission together without Walter. The control device isn't going anywhere. Take your time, Raven. Along with this, the pair worked together, Air able to show 621 the truth about Walter and his friend, she helped the mercenary through many fights, saved their life, and even literally opened doors for them. This same dynamic is very much like Dalmayan and Sirius, as we can read in his fourth writing. As always, she whispers to me from inside, she tells me she found something in the journals of Institute City, something about the potential for symbiosis. Coral release. If such a thing is truly possible, then perhaps I can join her on the other side. Yet in the end, Dormayan backs away, and Sirius' voice no longer can be heard by him. For 6 to 1, the outcome could be the same with Air, this being the path of the fires of Raven. Scared of what Coral could do again, the mercenary turns their back on Air, who leaves 6 to 1 behind. Her only goal now to stop the observers and 621. Air's tone during the fight with 621, however, was just this being has developed feelings for the humans she's connected with. It's almost this fight between lovers, with moments of very calm and rational conversation, and then the highs and lows of pain, anger, and then sadness. War? The spark of war? The fires that haunt Rubicon! Humanity wants to burn it all. Everything on Rubicon. I won't let you. Your fire must die. I'll end this, Raven. Raven, I still believe our shared dream. It's Air's and Coral's worst nightmare, as they are burned away to nothing. But as we know, this is only one fate of Air. The other two are the Liberator of Rubicon, and the die is cast. The Liberator of Rubicon ending is almost a middle ground between death and giving Coral what it wants. Coral is still contained within Rubicon 3, but now the potential to one day live together with humans is still there. In fact, Air even says this herself. One day, humanity and Coral will thrive together. You kept our potential safe. I know Walter feared a collapse. But I promise you, there's another way. Raven. We'll find it together. It's not really what Kara wants. It's the middle ground where really everything is the same again. The status quo has not been changed, but reset. Now the final fate of Air is found within the die's cast route, the outcome all Coral wanted. Some would say the desire of all creatures is to survive and flourish, and that is what Coral Release does here. The only problem is that All Mine tried to get rid of Air in 621, if Allmind had let the pair watch as the coral release happened, then no fighting would have been needed to be done, just the release of coral space-wide. The perfect place for coral numbers to keep rising and rising. It's here in this route you can hear Air sounding more happy, more thrilled as she talks 6 to one watching the coral release happen. Beginning. Coral release. Isn't it beautiful? symbiosis between beings had been achieved. Of course, what exactly happened is very much up for debate. Because what kind of symbiosis did this coral release create? 
Was it mutualism, where both organisms benefit from the relationship? Was it commensalism, where one organism benefits and the other is unaffected? Or was it parasitism, where one organism benefits and the other is harmed? In truth, we have no idea. We know armored cores are still around, but what about human life? Did the release wipe them out, creating a coral-only space? Or, like the surge back in Watchpoint Delta, has coral now made a home in the brains of all beings and machines across the galaxy? We may find out one day, but for now, this is the end of Air's history. A mutated coral that either died to the being that she grew close to, found herself in a middle ground where nothing really changed, or she achieved perhaps what all coral wanted, to find a way to grow and survive. To finish this report, let us take a look at the craft's air piloted, for as we know, Coral was able to work machines, and air would prove to be quite the pilot. Starting with the IB-07 Sol 644, a craft of the IBIS series of Coral Power Weapons created by the Rubicon Research Institute. It has a lot of Coral weapons featuring two double-barreled Coral laser cannons, vertical launch Coral missiles, and a Coral shield. It's also important to note this craft is capable of transforming into a jet-like fighter. Since this craft cannot be piloted, however, we move on to the AC Echo, an AICO-1 Euphemera unmanned armored core model Air would be piloting during the fight with Allmind. It's a craft with a lot of energy to offer thanks to the Coral Generator and excellent energy defenses. The only issue with Echo is it's not a craft really made to be piloted by humans as we can read a number of the part descriptions. An old development quirk allows for piloted operations, but one should not expect any concessions for the limits of human sight. But the core box made only perfunctory concessions for a human occupant, albeit with the actuation translation that outstrips the capability of human nerves. So while a human pilot could control the craft, it would be very bare without the comforts of other ACs, and quite frankly, be limiting the craft's capabilities. As for weapons, Echo comes with the NB Redshift Coral Rifle, which allows for charged shots to reduce more coral explosions from the rifle. The ML Redshift Coral Oscillator, a red blade that when charged, can really cut down an armored core. The NGI-006 Coral Missile Launcher, which can be charged to increase the missile's firepower. And finally, the NGI-028 Coral Shield, able to create a 360-degree coral shield around Echo. Taking some time with Echo for myself, I found the missiles to be a very hit and miss, requiring a pilot to be thinking three steps ahead to use them, this due to their slow speed, as any foe with a bit of speed can outrun them. It seems a pilot would have to stagger a foe before firing it for the best outcome. The coral rifle is very much the bread and butter of this build, able to take out MTs, ACs, and even large foes. Its charge shots can deal the major damage, while the single shots are powerful enough to take out smaller foes. Combining this with the Coral Shield and a hit and run tactic of piloting seems to suit Echo best. As for the Coral Oscillator, the blade is powerful and used on a stagger foe can leave a foe cut in two, charged or not. But it should be noted a pilot cannot use the Coral Shield and blade at the same time, which would make sense as the blade would be blocked by the shield. However, the blade itself, I feel as a weapon, is best used in an all out attack style. Granted, I am not a pilot who uses blades often, yet I felt with the redshift that it really needed to be used with its coral rifle partner to down a foe, as with the pair together they can make that stagger meter rise, and are really going to be the ones doing the major damage. This does mean Echo will have to take hits, as the blade waves do have a range to hit, this being around 300 meters. In the end, Echo is a powerful craft, and served air well, and I'm sure it would serve any other pilot well too. That is, if they can cope with the very basic comforts this craft offers, and have an understanding that they cannot fully use the full capabilities of this craft due to them being human. With this, the report on air comes to a close. Registration number RB23, Augmented Human, C4621, Raven. Allmind has identified you as a potential asset to the release project.